Welcome to Centre Church. We hope you enjoyed this message, recorded live from our Burgess Hill campus. You know, we are living in a time where there is, um, there's quite a lot of things around that kind of threaten our, our confidence, it threatens our, our comfort, it threatens our hope. We are, when we look at uh, things that are happening right now, when you open the news, the things that we hear on the news are quite unsettling sometimes. Some of them, they are a threat to our financial, I would say to our financial security. Some of them, they are a threat, they come across like a threat to our health. These days, there's quite a lot going on about how the NHS is struggling and the waiting list. And sometimes you can start to think, if I fall sick today, am I going to be taken care of? I work, I work in the NHS, so I know we are safe. But when the news come across and say, oh, there's this problem and this is going on, sometimes you think, will I make it? When you hear the news that come and say, you know, somebody died bleeding in their home while waiting for the ambulance, and the ambulance did not turn up. It's quite unsettling. And sometimes it's things that affect our children, some ideologies that are coming these days. And you are thinking, what is happening to our children? What will become of the future of our children when they continue to hear some of these things that seem destructive, uh, that seem to be things that will contaminate or deviate their ways uh, in the Lord? And that can be quite settling. So... This, the a message that I want to bring this morning, which I'm going to read from Psalm 91. It's a message or a voice that comes through and breaks into all that uh, instability, that feeling of hopelessness, that feeling of fear, that feeling of, um, you know, overwhelm or problems that we see around. It comes like a voice that breaks and cuts through that darkness and that fear. And it speaks to the heart of those who fear God. So this morning, in the next half an hour, we are going to be sharing from Psalm 91. And I want us to read the whole of Psalm 91 together this morning. Uh, and I did say it's going together with uh, the testimony that came to us this morning. Because it talks about how God protects his own. And I've I entitled this message... Um, Finding rest in trusting God. Finding rest in trusting God. Our world is so full of things that causes unrest, that steers anxiety, fear, instability. But there is a call in this psalm that is calling us to find rest in God. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to read. You see, this is, um, this is like poetic literature. So if I kind of chop and cut and chop, it probably won't make any sense. So I'm going to read the whole of it. It's Psalm 91, and it's got 16 verses. I'll just read it quickly. From verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely, he shall deliver you from the snare of the faller and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall find refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays at uh, west at noon. A thousand shall fall on your side, and ten thousand uh, on and ten thousand on your right hand, but it shall not come near you. But with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High God, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon lions and cobra and young lions and serpents, and you shall trample them under your feet. 
because you have set your love upon me, therefore I will deliver you. I will set you on high because he has, I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? In the midst of all the problems, in the midst of uh, threatening situations, in the midst of questions, in the midst of wondering, and then this psalm breaks through as a message to those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I want us to just think of any time in your lifetime, uh, a time where you felt overwhelmed, a time where you felt troubled, a time where you felt so anxious, you felt like prayers were not being answered. You felt like you had a burden sitting on you and you, you didn't know what to do. I want you to be thinking, how did you respond in that time? Who did you turn to? Where did you find your confidence? What happened to you in that time? For me, I would think of a time when my children were still young. In fact, when my, um, when my youngest was just a few weeks to a few months old and my elder son was eight, and it was just me at home. My husband was working away from home. And it was a difficult time for me. In as much as I trusted God, in as much as I had confidence in God. But there were nights that I would wake up and I would be pacing in the house. And I would be looking through the window. And I would feel nervous. And I would be thinking, if something happens, how? It was like I was looking for a way to escape. I was thinking, what will I do with this newborn and, the, and an eight-year-old on my own? Will I be able to handle? How about if they fall sick in the night? What will I do? Who stays with the other? And I would worry about that. And many times, the Spirit of God would remind me. And I would turn back to the Word of God. Did I do it right all the time? No. A week later, I would wake up and I'm unsettled and the same thing is going on. So the question I'm just asking. You know, for some of us, we could be going through some overwhelming time right now. We could be going through some situations where we are looking for answers and we do not have answers. We could be having situations that we are saying, I have been praying and believing God, but things seem not to, to, be, to be shifting. And that can, be, that can be quite unsettling. But I want us this morning to be encouraged with the word of God. And God has brought this word to bring encouragement to us as individuals, as families, and also collectively as a church. It's a word to empower and to encourage us in the midst of the things that are going on right now. It's called the things that affect the nation as a whole, like the expenses that are going up and up and non-stop. It could be uh, anxieties about mortgages that are keeping on going up in interest and things like that. It could be to do with our health. It could be anything. But at the same time, it could be some things that affect us collectively as the body of Christ. And this uh, psalm is coming this, this morning. And the start of this psalm, it starts on verse 1. I just want us to, 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 to walk through. It's a psalm that was, um, you know, some school of thoughts, they say it was written by Moses after he had built the tabernacle, and he was just saying, those who dwell in this secret place of the Most High, making reference to the tabernacle, but then taking it on to the everyday life, how God breaks through in the lives of the people. But other schools of thought say the language in there reflects that it's probably David. But that is not the matter. The matter is whether it was David or it was uh, Moses. The interesting thing is uh, the writer of this psalm is not writing from a place of being naive or a naive mind. Uh -uh. It's somebody, whether it's Moses or David, they are people who walked the walk with God. They experienced some challenging things in their lives uh, as individuals, as leaders, as they were leading people, as they were doing great things that God had called them to do. They experienced certain things. So it's a psalm that is coming from a life experience. It's not just some words that were learned from somewhere. It's somebody who walked, experienced the challenges, experienced the pain, went through some difficulty. But after they came out of the difficulty, they stood and said, do you know what? They went to verse 1 and say, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This is the, you know, the exciting thing about this. Verse 1 presents a spiritual truth as a general truth. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under his shadow. That's a general truth to start with. And it's a call to dwell. So it's saying there is protection, there is sustenance, and there is provision for those who dwell in the secret place. What is dwelling? To dwell is to live in, to stay in, to wait in, to remain in, to live in. So it's saying those who dwell who live, who stay, who wait in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under his shadow. So the call is uh, in the midst of all the problems that you might be facing um, personally or collectively as a nation. Those who dwell in the secret place, those who remain in God, those who remain hiding in the secret place of God shall be protected and preserved through it all. In other words, there is no need to join with those who do not know God. To say we are in trouble, we are sinking, oh what shall become of us? Because those who dwell in the secret place have got something special that God has got for them. A protection under the wings of of the almighty God. Praise the Lord. So it says those who dwell in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. The question is, where do you abide? Where do you dwell? You know, it's a choice. We choose what to dwell on or where to dwell. In the times of feelings of overwhelm, anxiety, and fear, we can choose to dwell in the secret place of the most high. Or we can choose to dwell on our fear. We can choose to dwell on our anxiety. But guess what? Whatever we choose to dwell on has got an impact on the outcome. What comes after the problem and the issue that might be uh, overwhelming us. And the invitation is instead of dwelling on our fear, our trouble, our issue, instead of worrying and worrying over the problem, we are being invited to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Maybe somebody is asking, how do I dwell in that secret place? Do you know to dwell in the secret place of God? It's, a, it's remaining in the place of prayer and communicating with God. It's, a, it's, it's a maintaining the atmosphere of worship 24-7. A worship that does not end with a song when we are in a meeting, but a worship that is ongoing as we go on with our life. Uh, abiding in the, in, in the secret place of the Most High has got to do with meditating on the Word of God. Taking the Word of God and releasing the Word of God instead of speaking and worrying and con being concerned about the problem. It's about uh, looking at what the Word of God is saying and dwelling in what the word of God says. Praise the Lord. I pray that we are moving together. So verse 1, so verse 1 encourages us to choose what to dwell on. Do we choose to dwell in God, in his word, in worship, in fearing him, in his word, in obedience to his word? Or do we choose to dwell in our problems and our worries and our fears and our concerns? But we are invited to dwell in the secret place. Praise God. And then verse 2 goes on and it says, there comes the problem. My God. So verse 2, <laughs> verse two then says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So when we look at verse 1, it's a general truth. Those who dwell in the secret place shall abide. And then verse 2, it's a second step. It's moving from the, being a general truth hanging in the air, and it's becoming personal. It says here on verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my Lord and my God, in whom I trust. You see, the power of the word of God is not in the knowing the word of God. The knowing is the first step, but the power is in receiving that word and making it personal. 
So the psalmist starts with a general truth in verse 1. But then he makes it personal. I will say of the Lord. So when the word of God comes to us, it has got no power when it's knowledge in our head. It has no power when it's exciting uh, messages. And, you know, sometimes we go around and say, that was really nice. That was powerful. But the power of every message comes when it becomes a personal truth that we hide in our hearts, that we live by, that we execute in the way that we do our life. So, so verse 2 then, verse two is really encouraging us to take the word of God and make it personal. It's a truth that those who fear God shall abide under his shadow. But the power of it is when we receive it, we hide it in our heart and it becomes our personal truth that we live by. Which means even in the midst of things that are overwhelming us right now, things that are destabilizing us right now, it's taking that message, personalizing it, and become a message that contain me. Praise the Lord. You see, um, there's a scripture which says... Um, uh, Knowledge puffs up. When you are full of the knowledge of the word of God, but you are not taking it to heart and using it in your personal life, it says it just puffs you up. In other words, it makes you proud that I know this and I know that and I know that. But the power is when that word becomes personal and it starts to speak to you. So this talks about claiming the benefits, claiming the promises, claiming everything that the word of God has spoken, claiming it for your own uh, personal life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that we are moving together. So he says, I will, he say, I will say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. And the last statement there, he says, in whom I trust and this is the question I want to throw to us. Who do we trust in the midst of our issues? You know, sometimes it's very easy to trust. You know, for those who have got money in the bank, we can trust our money. For those who are fit and, you know, you are eating right, you are exercising right, you are ticking all the boxes, we can trust in our health. For some, we can, you know, we can trust in um, our families that have got big names. We can trust on, on any other thing. But the psalmist is calling us to say, my God in whom I trust. Why? Because all other grounds are sinking sand. Some things can look strong and standing today. But tomorrow everything will be gone. But those who trust in the Lord, it says here, he says here, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 20 verse 7 say, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But I remember and trust in the name of the Lord. Apostle Paul writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.12. He says, I also suffered these things. But nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I, had, I have committed into his hands. Hallelujah. He says, I am persuaded. I have I've trusted my life in him. Things might be looking dark right now. Things might be looking like there is no light in the end of the tunnel. But what is keeping me going is I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to do that which no man can do. Praise God. Now, uh, so still on verse 2, the second part of verse 2, it says, I will say of the Lord. The power is in what we say. So the psalmist says, I will say. So there is the general truth presented in verse 1. Those who dwell in the secret place shall abide. But then there is this real truth, this personal truth. I will say of the Lord, he is my Lord, my refuge, my strength in whom I trust. And that's the question I'm throwing back to you, people of God. What do you say? When things are going tough, what do you say? When you are feeling overwhelmed, what do you say? When things look dark, dark and the going gets tough, what do you say? Because what we say in the middle of those problems bears witness to the outcome. What do you say? The psalmist say, I will say of the Lord. When you are anxious, what do you say? When you are disappointed, what do you say? 
When times are uncertain, what do you say? You know, we have got to rise up and personalize the, the word of God such that we make declarations that the enemy cannot come near you. Why? Because what we are declaring and speaking reinforces our stay in the secret place. Sometimes we have said things that have plucked us out of the secret place of the Most High. That's why the psalmist is concerned about what we say. He says, I will say of the Lord in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the overwhelm, the no answers, the unanswered prayers, disappointed, even when we are angry, what do we say? The psalmist say, I will say of the Lord. The word of God is full of promises, over 7,000 promises in the word of God. And there is enough to say. Whether we are afraid, whether we are unwell, whether we are challenged, whether we are disappointed, there is a lot to draw from the word of God and say. The psalmist say, I will say. So the power is in taking the general truth and make it personal. But it's also in opening our mouths and say the right things in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of things that will be going on around us. Praise the Lord. You know, living in, the, in, the, in obedience to the word of God, submitted to what the Lord requires of our lives, living lives that fear God, lives that are given to God holy, walking upright with God, it keeps us reinforced in the secret place. The enemy wants us off that place because scripture says that whatever the blessings that are mentioned in Psalm 91, they flow out of the fact that we are dwelling in the shadow of the almighty God. When we are challenged with situations in our lives, the enemy wants to pluck us out of that place. Because when he plucks us out of that place, then he has got a strong hand over us. Because when we are hidden in the secret place of the most high, he cannot touch us, he cannot find us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in verse 3, verse 3 goes on and says, Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. I don't want to read everything that we have already read. But from verse 3 going on and on and on, you start to see that there are problems that are lined up there. Some problems are, so, are, are to do with, the, with the, it says here, some of them they are to do with the snares that the enemy set. Some of them are to do with things that fly by night. Threats that comes in the night. You know, Sometimes the night here is not just when it is dark. It is when it's dark in our hearts sometimes. There's sometimes when the light is shining outside, but right in the depth of our hearts, it feels like it's night every time because of things that are happening in our lives, things that steer fear and instability in us. But then the promise here is saying, even in those night times, in those times when everything looks dark, like there is no light in the end, he, it, it goes on to say, surely he will protect and he will cover us through those uh, circumstances. So it goes on and lines out by night, by day. Though we may watch others falling on the right or on the left, it shall not be for who? Those who dwell in the secret place. In other words, the problems will be there. The scary things will come. The overwhelming things will be there. But the call is that we reinforce our stay in the secret place. And we say the right things so that we remain covered and strong in the, in the, in the secret place of the most high God. Hallelujah. So it goes on and it's, uh, so it spills all the problems, the issues, the problems, the issues, the circumstances, the fears, the anxieties. And then later on when we get down to verse 10, it says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you or near your dwelling. For he shall give the angels charge of you to keep you, to preserve you, and to protect you. Praise the Lord. What a God we serve. He is calling us to dwell. He is calling us to open our mouth and speak forth. He is calling us to trust in him. And then he is giving us the promise, the promise of protection, the promise of covering, the promise of sustaining, the promise of, uh, of uh, sustenance. And that is our God. Now when I look on verse 7, 
which says a thousand shall fall. That reminds me every time when I'm watching the news and I'm starting to worry and I'm starting to feel concerned and I'm starting to wonder what shall things become. Some of the things, they are ideologies that our children are being exposed to. Some of it is probably even substances that you hear are flying around even in the streets. And sometimes we worry about our young people who are growing in a, in a, a, a culture or say in our society that has started to uh, allow some things that look like they might damage the future of the youngsters. And sometimes we are worried, we are concerned. But then when I look at, at verse 7, it says, a thousand might fall on your right and the others on the other side. It shall not be for you. And I find comfort because I realize that, do you know what? The things that happens in our world will continue to happen. The threats will continue to fly around. The things that destabilize will remain there. But there is a reassurance that though you may see a falling happening even in our time, because we have made God our Lord and our hiding place, our refuge and our strong tower. He says, it shall not come near your tent. Praise the Lord. It shall not come near your tent. Will it not happen out there? It will happen. Will the news not bring uh, scary things and unsettling things? Uh, they will. But I will say of the Lord, uh, regardless of what the news is bringing, regardless of what is being said, I will say of the Lord, uh, he is my Lord, my protector, my refuge in whom I trust. And I trust him personally. I trust him for my family. I trust him for the body of Christ uh, as a whole. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, in the middle of all the problems, in the midst of, of uh, all the things that we hear, we are not afraid. We are not anxious. We will not be overwhelmed. We are not victims. We will not be threatened. But we rise above those fears and we call out to the name of the Lord. We will say of the Lord, he is our God and our Lord in whom we trust. Praise the Lord. What might be overwhelming you in this season? I don't know what you are scared of right now. I don't know what is unsettling you. What is giving you sleepless nights? What are you worried and concerned about right in this season? You know, when you look at, this, um, at these verses that are spilling out the problems, the issues, you know, that, um, that might be there, that might be happening in the day, in the night, everything that is being spilled out here, it shows me that we are not exempt from the problem. The promise is, is not that you will not experience any challenges. The promise is not you will not, um, uh, you will not have things, uh, you know, not going the way you want them. The promise is not everything that you want will happen the way you want. Uh -uh. The problems will come. The challenges will come. Some things that, that uh, destabilizes or that, that, that causes unrest from your peace will happen. But there is a powerful promise. He promises that he will be with us through and through. Elsewhere, scripture says, even through the fire, I will be with you. Which means things that look fiery will come. Things that are threatening will come. Things that are unsettling will come. But we have confidence in the Lord. It is what we say and where we choose to hide and to stay in the midst of those problems. Have you ever stopped and think sometimes when people are going through problems, people might be going through exactly the same thing, but the, the response is different. And I think the reason for this is uh, where you dwell in the midst of that problem and what you say in the midst of that problem. There are some things that we would say that would drag us low and low and low deep into the problem as we worry about it and talk about it and meditate on it. You know, it's different talking about something, worrying and worrying and worrying. It's different from talking about something when you are just needing someone to hold your hand and pray together and declare and say what the Lord says concerning that issue. Praise the Lord. We serve a God who is more than able. A God who is our protector, our preserver. The Lord who will cover us even when the wind is blowing. 
in Exodus, um, there's, a, there's a scripture in, a, in a Exodus. I didn't have it here, so I won't be able to quote it. But um, Moses is told by God that there's a place near me where you can stand on the rock. And I will hide you. That even when the wind passes, I will hide you and then you will come out after. And that is how it looks like, dwelling in the secret place. The, 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 the troubles will come, the wind will blow, the storm will hit, but at the end of the storm, you will rise up and you come out strong. Praise the Lord. And that's the power of dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And the power of saying of the Lord instead of saying of the problem, the fear, and the anxiety. Hallelujah. This morning, I really sense in my heart that God wants to shift some things even among us. Uh, let's, look, uh, let's look at verse 14. Verse 14 goes on and it says, I did say verse 1 was a general truth. He who dwells. It's a general truth that we need to know. Verse 2 takes it personal. I will say of the Lord. I will say it's personal. I'm taking that message. It's becoming mine. I'm taking that truth in the word of God. It's becoming mine. And I'm speaking it over everything that is mine. It's personal. And then when you get to verse 3, it's the psalmist now telling us from their own personal experience. They experienced God personally. And in verse 3, he goes on to start to tell us, surely God will deliver you. God will protect you. He shall send uh, angels to guard over you. He shall be you. He is speaking with confidence. He's now sharing with others confidently. Why? Because he, they have walked and experienced the power of this God and how God can protect and preserve. And so here they've got the confidence to tell even us that this God, you can trust them. This is what this God is able to do. And then when we go down to verse 14 now, where I was going to, this now is God himself speaking. So there was a general truth, there was a personalization, there was someone else's declaration. But verse 14 is now God. And this is what God has got to say. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. This is God's promise. And he says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is now God speaking. Him, he has taken the word of God, personal, hidden it in their heart. And speak of the Lord. Set their heart on trusting God. And then God gives that. Do you know what? This morning, I just want us to look at that and personalize it. I did say the power of every message is what, in what we personalize. What we make our own. What we hide in our hearts. What we choose to release in our own situation. Is the word that works and that transforms things in our own life. I want us to personalize from verse 14. I'm going to personalize it and put, it, put my name there. I want you to hear what I'm talking about. Because I want us this morning to be praying in that way. Because wish he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver her. I will set her on high. Because she has known my name. Wish shall call upon me. And I will answer her. I will be with her in trouble. I will deliver her and honor her. With long life, I will satisfy her. And show her my salvation. I want us to start to take this word and personalize it. I did say, Psalm 91 is a psalm that every, almost every believer, they know it. Every time you talk about protection, they talk about it. Everyone knows about it. But this morning, there's something special that God wants to do among us. God has been steering this in my heart for the past week. And I just, uh, you know, I just felt that God is calling us individually, but also as center church. Huh? I was looking at this and I am saying, because center church has 
has set her love upon me, I will deliver her. I will heal her. I will, I will answer when, when, when center church calls. And this morning, I want us to be taking some time in a time of prayer. I'm sure I was very short because that was the intention to be very brief. So that we have this time where we are opening and we are saying of the Lord. The psalmist to say, I will say of the Lord. And I want us to be taking this and putting our names in there and starting to declare the protection. What we know that there are battles that are going on. They are things that are quite worrying. They are things that are giving us a sleepless nights. Some of them, they are to do with what's happening now. But some of them, they are fears and concerns about what the future holds. Whether for us or for, or for our children or the generation that's going to come after us. They could be things that we already worry about. But I just sense the Lord saying, because you have made him your hiding place. Sometimes it's me because I read putting my name. But the next step will be me, will be me saying, because the Chigora family has set their eyes on me, I will deliver them. For some of us, it's family issues that we want to place our names right there and say, because collectively as a family, we have set our eyes on this God. God will deliver us from this pestilence, from this problem, from this issue. Do you realize sometimes there are some issues that run from generation to generation? You look at that problem, whether it's an emotional issue, there are some emotional issues that run in the family. But I just sense that this morning, as we open our mouths and say what the word of God says, there are some chains that God wants to break. There are some things that God wants to stop uh, this morning. There are some things we have worried about uh, because we have seen them flowing and running in the family. But this morning I sense that God is putting a stop to some of those things uh, because we have set our eyes uh, on God. Uh, and this morning something is going to break. Something is going to give in uh, and allowing the power of God uh, to rise up in our personal lives, our families, even in our midst as the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank you for listening to this week's message. For any more information or to find out more of what we do as a church, you can contact us at info at centerchurch.uk or check out our website at www.centerchurch.uk